Even as the president faces impeachment, his re-election team isn't slowing down. I spoke with the chairwoman of the, of the uh, Trump Victory Finance Committee to learn more. Take a look. Joining me now from our New York studio is Kimberly Guilfoyle, who now serves as the national finance chair of the Trump Victory Committee. Hi, Kim. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, fantastic. Great to be on your program. So you've been a surrogate for some time now, and uh, you've mentioned the president's ability to mobilize a grassroots campaign. He's obviously thriving among his base. He has something like a 95 percent approval rating. How is the campaign working to gain support among those that are undecided? You know, it's a great question. And when you talk about the president's ability as it relates to, you know, grassroots politics, I think he really is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. It's true. It's not fake news. Because when you see his rallies, you have people across every socioeconomic background, demographic, neighborhood, walk of life. And in fact, we have people who are libertarians, who are independents, who are Democrats, flat out liberals. And we're taking all of this research and this data that we're compiling from people that register to go see the president. And we're actually developing an incredible database across the country that is going to be mobilized to get out the vote come election day. What we're also seeing is those people are willing to make a financial contribution to the president. Some of the best moments that I have now working on behalf of the finance team and fundraising for the president are people who come up and ask me, you know, is my donation, you know, big enough? Is it okay if I give $5, go on a payment plan every month to donate to the president? These are real impactful stories of hardworking men and women that are forgotten no more under President Trump's uh, leadership. They believe in him. They feel economically empowered. And the results are in, as you see, you know, over 7 million new jobs created, 6 million people off of uh, welfare and uh, food stamps. This is something that is generational in terms of the change and the impact that it creates across families and really its legacy building. Yeah, and the president's re-election campaign and the RNC, they've raised a record amount of money like you touched on there. I mean, the campaign raised $5 million on impeachment day back in December alone. A combined total of 154 million in Q4 of last year. So once the trial is over, what is the campaign's fundraising approach moving forward? Well, we have a really incredible call day coming up on February 7th that I'm doing with Don Jr., with Eric and Laura. It's a family call day that we're reaching out. People across the country, we're all going to be mobilized. We expect to do a big number on that day, you know, as well. But we have really not even, uh, I think, begun to even hit our stride in terms of the fundraising. We have $200 million uh, cash on hand. Like you said, we had a record year in 2019, $463 million we were able to raise. And we're going to go for another $500 million plus in 2020 to make sure that the president has the economic resources, the gas in the tank to be able to get the job done. And as you see, one by one, the Democrats, they're dropping like flies, falling out of the race because they can't keep up with the energy, the enthusiasm or the results that President Trump's been able to deliver. People are really engaged in this. They have skin in the game. And the people that are making those donations, large and small, are the people that will show up on election day to reelect the president. Impeachment has been really Sad to say, sorry, Democrats, a godsend, because we have been raising so much money off it. People are so disgusted with what they've been trying to do to the president, with no evidence to support these articles of impeachment. The articles of impeachment themselves are unconstitutional. You will see this come to a quick, swift end, and the president can get back to the business of serving the American people. And shame on the Democrats who have tried to do this. They're wasting the taxpayers' money. They knew this was going to come to no end. They're trying to slow President Trump down. I know the man for 14 years. He is the hardest working person I have ever met in my life. And he is focused and determined, and he is in great spirits because he shakes this off and he keeps moving forward. Well, and, and that brings me to my next question. There was a recent report by CNBC that uh, said that the Democrats that are running for president in 2020, they've raised more than three times as much money as a president. But he has an edge over individual opponents. So are you concerned that the Democratic base may be more energized heading into November? I don't think so. When you see people, and I was there when the president, when he announced, you know, his reelection that he was going to be running, and we had our launch in Florida, and it was thunderstorms and lightning and terrible weather, and people stood outside for 48 hours, for two days, okay? Young people, old people, everybody mobilized, standing out there just for a chance 
to see the president. If you don't think those people are going to show up on Election Day, I mean, come on, but, you know, the proof is in the pudding there. These rallies are incredible. It shows that he has created a movement across this country where people are really feeling proud. They love the president's policies, putting America first. These Democrats, they're not even any of them are going to be able to debate against the president. Let's just talk about that. Joe Biden, when he's in front of 20 people, requires a, a teleprompter. He can't even remember what state he's in or whether he's still vice president or not. It's not even a fair fight. But guess what? We're going to run up the score. We're going to get every voter out there that we can to mobilize. We're going to have the economic resources to do it. And the president is delivering result after result. While they're trying to impeach him, he's delivering USMCA, immigration reform, border agencies working together in concert to make sure that we are safe as a country and building the wall, mm -hmm. national security, killing terrorists like, you know, Soleimani and al-Baghdadi. So we should thank the president for what he's doing. And 187 judges to mention, not two, uh, two Supreme Court justices as well. Yeah, and I, and I want to go back before I let you go. We're running out of time here now, but I want to go back to your mention of Joe Biden. So the president's been going after Bernie Sanders yeah. recently at rallies and, and even on Twitter, he's very active there. Uh, before, though, the campaign messaging was a focus largely on Joe Biden. So why that shift? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great question, actually. But, you know, I mean, the president, he's an equal opportunity uh, puncher. You know, he hits them all. So whether it's he's hitting Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders or Biden, it kind of depends on the news cycle and what's going on. Right now, you see a lot of sparring back and forth between, you know, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, as we saw in the debate, one calling the other one, you know, a, a liar. Um, he's definitely taking his fair shots accurate at Joe Biden as well. The bottom line is the president doesn't have, pick a favorite who he wants to go against. He's quite happy to go against any one of them. Right now, Bernie, you know, congratulations. He gets the president's attention for a week. Next week, it'll be somebody else. All right. And of course, we see this impeachment battle playing out. Thank you so much for your time, Kimberly Guilfoyle. Pleasure. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.